Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be talking tups and a lot of these guys are actually quite friendly now because they know what feed is but that is nothing to do what we're talking about today and the reason we've got all the boys in well all the shearlings in is because we have some decisions that need to be made and that is which of these boys are going to be coming to the Clint Society Ram Inspection and we're going to register for breeding next year. So it's quite exciting. We're going to pick the cream of the crop to take with us over to Welsh Ball to see if they can make the grade. Hope you enjoy it guys. If you do, please tap that like button, subscribe to the channel and don't forget, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Right then lads, you all gonna come round. Come on lads, come on lads. <whistles> there is also some tops that shouldn't be in here. Obviously, the two roof sands should not be in here, they're not gonna be inspected. And we also have three of my aged rams in here that we're getting ready to shear. First of all, I'll get the ones I don't want chucked out. So here's that 3,000 pound ram we bought. Roof sand number one, roof sand number two. So funnily enough, some of those lads are these lads' sons. Just look at them. They all look like different sheep once they're shown, but they're the three possible show aged rams we've picked out this year. The Irish top, homebred top, the top we bought last year, the Dylan Jones top. Haven't really decided which of three we're gonna take yet, but getting them all shown. For now, down to these boys. I'll probably get three or four in at a time and we'll have a quick look at them. One comment I will make about all of these, some of them are peeling. They're not peeling properly, it's because they were shorn in the winter, so it's such a fresh fleece coming through, they're ready to be shorn. So normally they wouldn't really peel, but because they've been shorn once, it's kind of put them out of sync. Now obviously, I have been through all of these as lambs and cut them down to 12. 12 that I think would make the grade a while ago, but things change, pastons can be affected, they have to be to breed type. So before I actually go up down and cut them all, I'll explain what we're actually doing today and best of that. So in the Clean Society, they have a ram inspection. So once a year, you can take any of your shearling rams that you want to breed with or sell for breeding to get classified as registered. So that means they're officially a pedigree clean top, but they have to pass the inspection to prove that a type and good enough to breed. So what we're looking at today, if I just put the camera here. So we'll start with this lad here. So what we're looking at is, first of all, is he a good breeding top before we get about any of the pedigree stuff. So when we're looking at him, we're looking at things like pastons and pastons are these joints here. So you want their legs to be like that. If their legs are straight down, if they're over on the pastons, it means the joint goes like that. That's a problem because it means over time, they'll get foot problems and they won't last as long. So by breathing tops that have good feet, it means good longevity. And next of all, we're looking at their teeth. Here's a shearling or a two tough. So that means he's got two adult teeth, which are these two big teeth here and the rest of them are still baby teeth. So every year they grow an extra big tuff, which means they're an extra year older, up to eight, which is eight tuff. So also when you're looking at the mouths, you want those teeth to basically touch his gum so it's like very smooth. You can either have an undershot or overshot mouth if not, and if they're like that and the teeth don't rub straight across those gums, so they've got a good bite, it means that over time, those teeth are gonna decay quicker. And they're gonna to struggle to graze as they get older. And then obviously you wanna check the testicles. So I'll go down here, make sure they've obviously got two and they're a decent size. So basically, those are the important bits about him structurally. So structurally, you want a ram like that. And also you look at the back because you want a nice flat back. You don't want to have back problems. It's kind of rating him as an athlete to make sure he is good enough to work. And then once you have done that, what you do is rating him as a pedigree clean. When we're talking clean characteristics, we are looking at things such as their nose. So first of all, I said, we'll start with his nose and that should be jet black with no pink on it at all, which that is a great example of actually. They all should be like that. We're very strict with the black nose. Then we go onto the ears. They should have some nice black spots on there. Just like that, that is very traditional. Some cleans will have the black spots. 
I do like the black spots because it's nice and traditional. Then we want absolutely no brown hair on them at all. They should be a pure white breed. So especially on their back legs there and on the front legs, you'll see there is absolutely no brown hair on there at all. There might be a bit of mud, but there's no brown hair. And then after we've done brown hairs, we are looking here. So you can imagine if you have a horned breed, like a Hebridean, what other breeds are a Soe, some of those more traditional, a Norfolk corn, they have big long horns and they have been bred to lose those horns. So now we're just doing one thing, they're getting a bit boisterous, to make sure that they don't go back to previous genetics. And that is just checking here where their horns would be to make sure that they have no horns growing. So he's all right, no problems there. And then after that, it is basically personal preference. So I've picked these boys out. I do like them. To me, I like the type. Um, when I'm looking at a cleaner, I want something nice and long. A bit of back end on it, especially for myself. These are dual purpose. These go for butchers, lambs, the tops. The ewes go for breeding. So we want something that works both ways. We don't want something with a huge head because we still want easy lambing tops. Something with a wide head is not good especially when we're trying to breed ewes, you won't, don't want to be putting those characteristics into your females. Um, and then, yeah, that is it. So the boy there, I will give him a pass. We've got the inspector to give him a pass too. So we'll chuck him out and then we'll get looking at the rest. So now we're on to the next ram. I'm not, I'm not going to talk you through every single one. You're all going to get bored, but if anything cool, anything a little bit different, or anything I don't like, I pick up. Um, I will show you. And the next thing is this one, you know it's all about pastons. So this ram here has dropped on that paston. I do not like that. Can you see that leg there? He actually hurt that about six months ago. Um, he bashed it on a trough. I'm hoping for it to come right, but over time it just hasn't. So that foot there, can you see how oh, it's not straight up like that, like that top there. That is straight on that foot. This one is down on his paston. So unfortunately, I won't be taking him to a ram inspection. Just a shame because I, I really, really stood out to me in the field. But you've got to be strict. If you don't think he'll pass, he definitely won't pass. I'm happy with you two. So next up we have that ram that if you remember, I'll call them rams and tops, I'm sorry. They're the same thing to me. I just say some, sometimes say it one way, sometimes another, but the next one is actually a ram that hurt itself. Please don't jump out, mate. Um, where is he? The one with a bad head too. So he whacked his leg a couple of months ago and he got an abscess. That abscess grew, we popped it, and he's still recovering. So that is on a joint too. I don't want to risk it because it could have some long-term effects. So we'll keep him. It's probably good enough for a commercial ram, but as a pedigree ram, I don't want to risk him. I might not even be able to take him as a commercial ram if it doesn't heal up properly. So unfortunately, mate, you are going that way. Go on, boy. Go on, boy. Good lad. So in this final four, three out of four of them are my favourite tups. This is my favourite tup of the year. He is like a mini Goliath. Like, look how well he stands. Just look at him. Broad, nice and broad here, nice and broad there. Nice traditional clean head, very much like his dad. His dad actually won Yorkshire show and is like a spitting image of him. Like, even his head, if you look. I don't know how well you guys remember Goliath. Maybe don't want to see that. I meant to measure this the last couple of times I came here. So if, if they have a beauty spot on their leg and it's bigger than a 20p piece, it's too big. These are just all the kind of rules there are. So I've just got to make sure that this spot on this ram isn't too big. Right, here it is. Hopefully they're not covering it up either. So black spot there. I'm reckoning that's okay. 
you're okay. Right, while well, we do it, nose, check, teeth, check. See, this is a good example because its teeth are just coming through. So if you go like this and down, you'll see it's got like a broken mouth. That's because its new teeth are coming through over its old ones. So that is like a wait and see. That's like a maybe, I guess, because I don't know exactly what its teeth are like. Right, so that is the ear tags all red. Someone should have remembered the EID reader. It was like going back in time then, actually trying to read the tags. Luckily, Roxanne tags are very good at reading. So, if you boys go out, good lads, good lads, good lads. And that is us done. Quick job done, really enjoy stuff like that. And it was a quick video, most likely, too. So, guys, all I need now is any of your ideas with names beginning with L because that is the prefix like letter of the year. Well that is annoying because literally as I was finishing off GoPro battery but GoPro battery died so if you know you know they've not got the best batteries but as I was saying any any names beginning with L guys please pop them in the comment section. I'd love to get some names off some of you guys rather than me come up with some rubbish. They could be anything literally Lionheart Leonard, anything, anything. So guys, massive thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we have eight rams going for the ins inspection. Unfortunately, because the battery died, they're all mixed up back together. So, but you show a rough idea by what I was doing through the video. I'll see you next time. And thank you for watching. Cheers, guys.